Hey everybody, I am super excited about the message you're about to view. It's entitled Pure Imagination. It was just recorded the first Sunday in August 2019, and I can't wait for you to see it. I wanted to take a few minutes before you view this particular sermon to ask you if you're not a member of the Freedom Church, but you thoroughly enjoy our messages and our ministry and our approach to the Christian life, I wanna ask you to become a faithful supporter. I'm asking you to become a financial supporter of what you're about to watch and what you've been watching via social media. We are a very unique ministry in many, many ways. One of which we made an executive decision about four or five years ago to not sell CDs or DVDs of my sermons. I decided that we would give them away for free, that we would produce them in a professional manner and then put them on social media for everyone to view via Facebook, via our YouTube channel, also via Instagram. And we've been doing that for about four or five years. People always compliment us on the word that we teach, the way that we deliver the message. They also compliment us on the professionalism of the production of our videos. They say, man, your stuff looks like it should be on major television networks. Well, a lot of people may or may not know that we were once on a local Christian television station and we pulled our program from that local television station to use the resources, the financial resources, uh, to bless the community, to do more things in terms of outreach ministry. That was a few years ago. But now the time has come where we feel like we need to be back on major television networks so that people all over the world, beyond social media, can see and experience this wonderful gift that God has given us called the Freedom Church and really be blessed by my unique approach to teaching God's word. I have gotten two calls over the last weeks from two major Christian television networks. I spoke with the vice president of one major network where they have almost 90 million households uh, viewing their television broadcasts. They have names like T.D. Jakes, Creflo Dollar, uh, Dr. Bill Winston, Ivy Hilliard are on this particular network. And uh, the vice president viewed some of our videos and he said to me personally, he says, man, your program is ready for the major networks. It's ready for the world. The production is there, the way you teach and preach, the message, the way you deliver it, it's unique. And that's the one thing we're hearing from all of these people is that our ministry, our message, my approach is unique. If you know, like I know, this generation needs a voice that can communicate to them on their level and at the same time, link them to the wisdom of God, the biblical principles of God, and just a better way of living, a better way of thinking, and a better way of conducting oneself. Well, God has given us a unique gift uh, to be able to take that word, that message, and deliver it to the masses. In my very own congregation, I have young folks all the way to the age of 70, 80, 90 year old people hearing the word of God every Sunday and thoroughly enjoying it. And here's what blesses me. They apply the word and then they see the results. Would you consider being a partner? If you're not a member of the Freedom Church, but you love these videos, you love these messages, you've been watching them and you've been commenting and they've been blessing you and you know they've been blessing you. Many of you wait eagerly from one video to the next video. You wait to see what the message is gonna be and you wait with great anticipation. Well, I need your help. I would love to go on one of these major networks and reach 90 million homes in the world. I know we've got the message. I know God has given us the style and the technique, and I know he's anointed us to do it, but we need your help. The cost for the network that I'm really considering most is $700 to $1,900 per 30 minute broadcast. You heard me, $700 to $1,900 per 30 minute broadcast. Now, if you're not familiar with television, uh, cost, you might say, well, that's ridiculous. That's a lot of money just to be putting into a, a television broadcast. You have to kind of consider the fact that it's going to be reaching many, many people. It has the potential to reach many, many souls and change many lives, bring people to Christ, get people off drugs, have people thinking a different way, becoming better uh, citizens of our world. Our program can do that. Our message can do that. We know that to be a fact because over the last 11 years, We've seen it do that in the local church. We've seen it change some incredible lives uh, that if you look at them today, you would not even be able to tell where they come from. So listen again, I'm getting ready to let you enjoy this message entitled Pure Imagination, but I had to come on here to ask those of you who are not members of the Freedom Church, 
but you really do enjoy our ministry. You enjoy our videos. And when you watch our messages or you read something or write on social media, it speaks to you. It encourages you. It builds you up. And it gives you the power and the strength that you need to make it through another day. Ministry is expensive and ministry is expansive. And listen, I can't do it without your help. I desire to take it to the next level. I desire to share it with a larger audience. And if you know that you've been impacted by it, just imagine how the world would be impacted by it if you would support it and help us take this message and all of our messages into the homes of 90 million viewers. Well, that's it, guys. Sit back, get ready to enjoy this phenomenal message. It's going to bless you. It's simply entitled Pure Imagination. Let's read Matthew 19 and 14. One, two, ready, read. But Jesus said, let the children come to me. Don't stop them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to those who are like these children. You may be seated. Today's message is simply entitled, Pure Imagination. The Golden Ticket. And I know I, I, I'm finding out that many of you uh, are not privy to the classics that I continue to try to bless you with in my sermons, amen. I've had one, two, three, several people tell me, Pastor, I've never seen Cinderella. Another brother said, Pastor, I've never seen The Lion King. I started to tell him to move his membership. Amen, somebody, amen. And I'm praying to God that somebody has seen Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory. If you haven't, turn off the Housewives of Atlanta and invest some good watching time in these classics that I bring to you. Somebody say, pure imagination. The Golden Ticket. The Golden Ticket. Joyce Myers wrote a book that is profound called The Battlefield of the Mind. Okay. I have recommended this book to I know hundreds of people since she wrote it because I read it several times myself and it is spot on. She talks about the battlefield of the mind because she really understands that your mind is where all the battles happen in life. Here's what I want you to understand about your mind. Victories must first be won in your imagination before they can be manifested in your reality. I'm already preaching. I'll say it again because somebody needs to get that. Victories must what? First be won where? Before they can be manifested in your reality. Here's another one. Your life reveals what your imagination conceals. Mm. I can look at people and tell what their imagination is concealing because you will never ever become anything greater than you've imagined yourself to be. Amen, somebody? So in, when Jesus talks to us in Matthew 19 and 14, he says, let the children come to me. You have to understand the backdrop of this scripture. Jesus is going to and fro and people are always bombarding him. They always want to have a word with him. It's kind of like me when people see me in different places, they want to have a conversation. A few weeks ago, I was in the bathroom and a brother held a full conversation while I was in the bathroom. And I was like, bro, I can't believe you're doing this. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Come on. And I was trying to be nice and polite. And I was like, oh my God, I get a taste of what Jesus went through. Amen. Everywhere he went, people wanted to touch him. Why? Because he was a powerful person. He was an inspiration. And then here's this day where Jesus is doing what he does and children, somebody say the children. The children, the children want to bum rush him and they want to touch him. They want to talk to him. And the disciples doing what disciples do, being security one-on-one, -on -one, making sure that Jesus isn't bothered. They stop the children from getting to Jesus. And Jesus says to his disciples, you can stop anybody you want to stop. Mm. But don't you ever stop the children. He said, when the children have enough desire to want to be with the Messiah, that's a special child, that's a smart child. Don't stop the children, because a lot of grown folks ain't got enough sense to try to get to Jesus. Jesus said, whatever you do, don't stop the children. Let the children come to me for the kingdom. Don't miss this. This is divine intelligence. For the kingdom of heaven mm, belongs. I could shout right here, but it's too early. It belongs to those who are like these. I just want to run around the church right now. Pastor, where is the divine intelligence? Because God is telling us something about our state of mind when it comes to having the kingdom of God. See, some of you are too grown to be blessed. Oh, my God. 
Some of you are too smart for your own good. That's why you don't tithe because mathematically it doesn't make sense for you to give 10% of what you make and then to give an offering and believe you're going to be blessed. Mathematically, it doesn't factor into something that you believe is possible because your imagination doesn't go that far. Amen. But I know some folk that know if you give God your best, God will give you his best. But you have to imagine it. Matter of fact, you got to win that battle in your imagination. Somebody say mind. Thoughts, heart, children are trigger words. From now on, when you read the Bible, if you ever see the word mind, let this mind be in you, or thoughts, or the word heart, or children, all of those words are synonymous with the word imagination. Why? Because there is nothing more powerful than your imagination. I remember when you and I both were children, we used to use our imagination in a powerful way. We used our imagination to do anything. Can I get a witness? Some of y'all got had, had a vivid imagination. Yeah, when you were a child, you used your imagination just like I did. You imagined somebody liked you and they didn't even like you. Some of y'all had imagination girlfriends. Don't, don't sit here. Don't do that. Don't do that. Some of y'all had an imagination boyfriend. If you're like me, you had imagination girlfriends that was on TV that didn't even know you existed. Oh, you can say amen. Listen, I done dated Janet Jackson. I don't care what nobody's saying. Janet Jackson was my girlfriend when she was on Good Times playing the role of Penny. That was my girlfriend, and you can't tell me nothing different. Also had another girlfriend. She didn't know it, but she was my girlfriend. Tootie on the facts of life. That was my girlfriend. Y'all ain't got to say nothing. I'm telling y'all all my girlfriends. My imagination was crazy, boy. Somebody say it's a powerful thing. We used to use our imagination to be anything. We used to use our imagination to go anywhere. You can imagine yourself going different places. So I like, that's why I like reading books because books take you on a journey. But isn't it amazing how when we become adults, hmm, we use our imagination to keep us from doing things, keep us from being things, keep us from going places. Why? Because an imagination can either liberate you or incarcerate you. Hmm. I'm feeling good today. See, imagination is neither good or evil. You just have to make sure that it's working for your benefit. As an adult, we would rather imagine what could go wrong. Yeah than to sit and imagine what could go right. Some of y'all spend your days wondering what could go wrong. You can imagine the worst case scenario, but you can't imagine the best thing happening in your life. Matthew 5 and 8 says it's best. God blesses those, oh, I hope you remember what I told you, those whose hearts are pure. Oh, I don't know how you sat there and didn't, and didn't, didn't wiggle on that script, amen. God blesses who? Those whose hearts what was one of the trigger words I told you? So we can literally say God blesses those whose imaginations are pure. Watch this. For they will see. Okay, some of y'all don't get what I'm trying to tell you. See, when your imagination is pure, you can see what can't nobody else see. I'm not talking about y'all that go halfway. I'm not talking about you all that go a little bit for God. But people that go all out for God, God will go all out for them because you reap what you sow in the kingdom. The reason why a lot of y'all are lukewarm is because you lack a pure imagination. The reason why you have to decide whether or not you go into church, because you got a, an imagination that's not pure. The reason why you don't really work hard like a lot of people do in ministry, because your imagination is not pure. You can't imagine this really making a difference in your life. You can't imagine being a member of a church, sitting under some teaching, applying the word of God, really making a difference in your life. You have been so bombarded with negativity and you've been so bombarded and damaged by other ministries that when you get into a place that can bless you, your imagination won't allow you to see the possibilities. Amen. I'm stopping to tell you today that your imagination has got to be purified. Amen. This is why you got to be careful what you put in your eyeballs. Mm. See, that's real. some of y'all can't pray because you got too much pornography on your mind. Yeah, you trying to talk to Jesus and Debbie does Dallas keep popping up. I ain't got no church in here today. Where's my real? Thank you, brother, for being real. I got one real brother over here in the blue. Amen. God bless you. Amen. You trying to get a blessing from the Lord. And every time you, you even when you try to worship God, you say, oh, that got my mind again. Why? Because you have put so much garbage in it. You put so much garbage in it, it's hard to see God. Okay, let me bless you. God blesses those with a pure imagination. When the last time you imagined God blessing somebody other than you? Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to show you what a pure imagination looks like. 
See, when your imagination is not pure, you only want to see yourself being blessed. When your imagination is not pure, when somebody else gives their testimony, you can't even shout. Impure imagination. Here's what a pure imagination looks like. Every time I hear God bless one of y'all, my imagination runs off because I know if he bless you, he can bless. That's how I be doing. And the Bible says, God blesses those whose imaginations are pure for they will. <laughs> they will see God. You want to see God in your finances? Purify your imagination. You want to see God in your family? Purify your imagination. Some of you are incarcerated. We're going to bond you out as soon as we get this money. We're going to bond you out, but some of y'all are incarcerated. I say some of y'all incarcerated. Don't make me have you pull up your pants leg. Well, you can model that little ankle bracelet you got on today. But I ain't even talking about that kind of incarceration, Julius. I'm talking about spiritually incarcerated. You're incarcerated by what if? Help them, Holy Ghost. Now, you ain't incarcerated by Houston County and Bibb County and Dooley County. You incarcerated by what if? What if is a prison? What if is a prison? It's a penitentiary. What do you mean, Pastor? What if I don't make it? How many of y'all ever had that thought in your mind? Hold your hand up. How many of you ever thought, what if I fail? How about this? What if I embarrass myself? I have people that get blessed, and I ask them to give a testimony, and they are afraid to give a testimony because they say, what if I embarrass myself? God just blessed you. Who cares if you embarrass yourself? You better give God the glow. You talking about if I embarrass myself. Don't be embarrassed when you're blessed. Good God Almighty. Somebody say, he preaching good. Somebody say, I got to get out of what if. Who's hearing what I'm saying? There are people in this room who, because they listen and apply what I teach, had the audacity to go and apply for jobs where the description of the job clearly said must have a four-year degree. They're here. Clearly said must know how to do A, B, and C. But because they sit up under a mastermind teacher, amen, somebody? Pastor, I see this job I want and I ain't got all the requirements. What should I do? Playboy, shoot your shot. Amen, somebody? It ain't gonna cost you nothing to go down there and write your name on a folk resume. All they can do is look at it or not look at it. And then they say, Pastor, I got the job. Now, what if you didn't go down there? Get out of what if and get a pure imagination. See, you can't fool with me because my imagination tell me no weapon formed against me can prosper. My imagination tell me what's for me is for me. So if I don't get the job, it wasn't for me. Somebody say, I got to get out of this what if mentality. Come here, 2 Corinthians, give them a little more word, 10 and 5. 2 Corinthians 10 and 5. The Bible says we break down every thought. We do what? Talk to me left side, you're right. What do we do? We break down every thought and every proud thing that puts itself, oh, I feel good now, up against the wisdom. <laughs> I need you to hear me. See, the wisdom of God is foolishness to man. The wisdom of God is foolishness to man because when God tell you to do something nine times out of ten, it don't make no sense. Peter, you're in a boat that floats has no holes in it. It is buoyant and holding 12 disciples. Peter, if you really want to know me, get out a perfectly good boat and come walk on the water to me. That don't make no, come on somebody, that, I don't care how saved you are. That don't make sense to get out of something that's sure, watch this, and put your foot on something that's unsure. But when you get a word from God and you got a pure imagination, you can actually see yourself doing the impossible. Because sometimes logic will try to lift itself against the litmacy of God's word. Good God Almighty. We take hold every thought mm. and we make it. See, y'all don't like me today. We make it obey. That means you're going to have some thoughts. Come on, whoop, whoop. 
you're going to have some thoughts that are going to have to be arrested. Oh, don't act like you don't know what it means to be arrested. Now, it's probably not going to come willfully. Some of your thoughts are going to do like Julius the rabbit, going to run from the law. Amen. Some of your thoughts are going to not surrender, but what do you do? You got to stay after it because it's your thoughts that will not surrender, that wind up becoming your boss, that keeps you from surrendering to the supreme boss. Here's an example. I don't feel like coming to church every Sunday. No, you the pastor, and I live a full life work long schedules. And there are some Sunday mornings, I don't know what it is about my bed, I bet your bed's the same way. Monday through Saturday, my bed, yeah, it's all right. It's all right, but it's something about Sunday morning. My bed turned into a posture feeding. Hey man, somebody, I wish I had somebody. My bed becomes a ceiling match. I wish I had somebody know what I'm talking about. And I'm like, boy, this bed they never felt this. Good. They would say, just stay here another 10 minutes. I say 10 minutes ain't gonna hurt nobody. 10 minutes turn into an hour. An hour turn into two hours. And there's just some Sundays, man, I just don't feel. Now don't you judge me, don't you? Don't, don't, don't judge the past, I'm being, if I can't be honest, who gonna be honest now? But guess what? It ain't about what I feel. See, I recognize Julius. I done already imagined myself being a millionaire. I done imagined myself being a billionaire. I done imagined myself reaching billions of people for Jesus Christ. And I recognize that, listen, my actions got to match my imagination. Some of y'all are dreaming big, but you working small. Oh, my God. You got all these big dreams, but you don't want to put up to match what it is you say you want. So what do I do? I come whether or not I feel like it. And I will tell you this, so I ain't never came to this church and didn't feel better when I left. I ain't never come to this church. I tell you the God heaven truth. Somebody say, I gotta take those thoughts. I gotta make them obey Christ. Lean forward, lean forward. Don't fall out your seat, but lean forward. I want you to think about all the people you don't like. Hmm. Get them all. Come on. Get that one on the left side of the brain. Get that one that's hiding in the dark. Come on. I'm talking about all the people that literally make you sick. That the sound of their voice makes you regurgitate. And if you saw them on fire, you would not even. Never mind. Do you have them in your mind? For every person that you do not like, you've got to command that dislike to turn into like and turn that like into love. Why? Because you got to take authority over those thoughts. Hello, somebody. I'm teaching you. I hope you can hear me. I posted something on Facebook that bears repeating. Grudges keep you grounded. Oh, my God. And the reason why some of y'all can't take flight, you in the same place you've been last year, because you got too many folks you're mad with, too many folks you won't forgive. That's why you won't even clap, because I'm all up in your Kool-Aid, and I ain't even brought no cup. I'm drinking straight out the picture today. And it's good, too. What are you telling me, Pastor? Grudges keep you grounded. My life didn't take off till I forgave everybody that did me wrong. Everybody, 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 everybody. And when they do me wrong today, guess what I do, Eric? I let them go. Why? Because grudges keep you grounded. Because it's a heavy weight. And listen, listen, you can't be forgiven if you can't forgive. Some of y'all, let me say, no, don't clap yet, don't clap yet, because I'm going to take the clap right out your hand. Some of y'all going to go to hell. Not for being a hoe. Not for smoking dope. Not for drinking brown and clear liquor. Some of y'all going to bust hell wide open. And it's going to be sad simply because you would not forgive somebody. Point blank, period. Why? Because God will work with everything but a liar and an unforgiver. Liars can't tarry, and people who won't forgive can't be for Come on, you better hear me. You better hear me. 
So you putting your whole eternity in jeopardy because somebody owe you money, somebody talking about you, somebody stole your man. I keep telling y'all, sister, if he was your man, he couldn't have been stole. We break down every thought <laughs> and every proud thing. See, some of y'all are too proud. I ain't never seen so many folks that don't have nothing. Don't want to be nothing. Don't want nobody to tell them nothing. And just as proud. Proud of what? One dude who was on the internet had nine different children from nine different women. And he was proud. Oh, it got quiet in here today. I guess he came to church. <laughs> he was all on social media. I got nine different children by nine different babies. He was proud. I say, boy, how are you proud of something that you ought to be ashamed of? That's all right, you ain't got to clap. But isn't that what that world does to us? It makes us proud of things that we are ashamed of. I see some of y'all how you be dancing in the club. It's so quiet now. And you really be proud that you can make the left cheek move and the right cheek move. You really, you ain't gonna clap, but I'm good. Hey, Ralph, what's up? You really be proud. I know I'm in your Kool-Aid. You be so proud. Look at, really? That's what you proud of? That's your highest achievement in life? Sister, get a job, save some money, do some traveling. Come on, upgrade your weave, do something else. Tweaking in the background, your bathroom need to be clean. Come on, you. But you proud. Twerking and got a roach crawling on the wall and you proud. Come on, I'm, I love you, I love you, trust me. See, we're proud about the wrong things. Let me tell you something. I'm proud to be a black man in America that works, that pays his bills. I'm proud that I'm somebody that tries to make a difference. It's quiet in there now. Let me say this too, because the Holy Spirit just stole this on me. All of y'all that's gay. I love you. You know, I always show you love. I'm going to teach the word now. Told you once, told you twice. That's not God's will. That's not God's way. But understand this. If you're gay, the last thing you need to do is be proud of that. You don't have to clout. Somebody got to teach it. Because the devil got the whole world twisted. We proud of our sin. Now, I done done a lot of wrong in my life, but I'd be a fool to stand up here and say, yeah, I'm proud I hit that person. I'm proud I robbed that store. Don't look at me like that. I know I ain't the only one robbed the store. Come on now. See, you know that your imagination has been infected when you're proud of the wrong you've done. Yes, Jesus love and Jesus forgive, but he ain't never told us. Matter of fact, he say pride comes before the... Okay, I ain't got nobody clapping in here. If you're a man in here, stop being proud if you're not taking care of your children. Y'all ain't gonna like me today, but that's okay. And I'm so sick of you part-time pop-up daddies. I love you, but I got to preach to you. If you're going to be a man, be a daddy, you want to be proud, then the government shouldn't have to make you take care of your babies. You don't have to clap. I don't care about your hand claps. Proud of the fact that I take care of my children. Proud of the fact that I got them through school. I'm proud of the fact that I was there in their lives. I'm proud of that fact. Somebody said, I got to get a pure imagination. So I got to make my imagination obey God. Now, how many of y'all would testify that your imagination need to be arrested sometimes? Sometimes. Sometimes. You ever been so mad with somebody? Can we just be real for a few minutes? You ever been mad with somebody, you imagine yourself killing them? I love y'all today for being honest. See, some of y'all ain't going to be honest. I mean, no, no, I'm talking about for real, for real. For real. You, you imagine how you going to do it? See, some of y'all, some of y'all about bad as I am. How you gonna dispose of the body? Come on, let's just be real. Ain't no police in here, I hope, amen. We predicted by the church, amen. And if you, if you don't arrest that imagination, what it'll do? That thing will plan it all out step by step.
You see the danger of an imagination? Oh, don't, y'all get, y'all, listen, y'all can sit there and look at me like that if you want to. Some of your imaginations cause you to be in relationship with folk that wouldn't even worthy. How so? You imagined they was gonna become something that they never was. I have people in the church get married all the time off of imagination. You imagine he gonna get a job. You imagine she gonna learn how to cook. <laughs> so what you do, you do it based on your imagination. Let me tell you something, your imagination can't change people. Your imagination can only change you. So stop imagining people to be something that they're not. Use your imagination, am I right, Narada? For your own benefit. Somebody say, I gotta break down every thought. And I gotta get a pure imagination. Who would like a definition of what a pure imagination is? Just plain and simple. Here's a straight up definition. Take a picture of the screen. Put it up, Yana. It's uncontaminated by doubt and uncontainable by fear. Ah. That's what a pure imagination is. It's what, Pastor Troy, is uncontaminated by doubt. In other words, I've got, a, I've got such an imagination that doubt cannot make me not believe that God's going to bless me, that God's going to heal my body. It's uncontaminated by doubt. Why? Because I imagine myself being healed when I was sick. I imagine myself getting up off my sick bed. I imagine myself not having to take that medication. I imagine God didn't just save us just to go to heaven. He saved us to live the abundant life so that the sinner world could be interested in who we are and what we have because God's blessings is on us. I don't just want to be saved. I want it all. I want it all. So you get in that car and if it ain't what you want, you say, you know what? You're going to stop disrespecting me. You're going to stop cutting off when you get ready. Come on, talk to that thing. And you say to that situation, oh, here, come here, Holy Ghost, them jobs y'all hate. Folks, I used to punch a clock just like a bunch of y'all. Working for corporate America, working a job I hated every single day. I was on call. My wife hated my job because when they called me, I had to come two in the morning, got to go to work. Four in the morning, got to go to work. And I was on call all the time and I hated my job. But you know what I did? I spoke to it. I say, I will not always work here. I will not always work for these people. Matter of fact, I stopped saying I work for people. Even when I was working for people, I stopped saying I work for, I said I work for no man. A slave works for people. I am nobody's slave. We might work here, you might sign my check, but I don't work for you. Now some things you don't say out loud to the people you work for, because they don't go to this church, they're not gonna understand it. But instead of you hating Mondays, you ought to pop out of the bed and say, this is the day that the Lord has made. And I'm gonna go to this job and put in my time because I know I will not be here always. Matter of fact, you ought to get a calendar and just start marking down. Okay, that's one less day I gotta be in this hell hole. That's one less day I gotta work with these crazy people. That's one less day I got to take this ratchet ch Oh, shucks. Who am I talking to? This got to use your imagination while you sitting there on the job. Doing your job, imagine working somewhere else. Amen, somebody? You ought to be smiling so hard. They'll be like, why are you smiling so hard? Because I'm imagining working somewhere else. Oh, wow. Sorry I asked, amen. Somebody say, God wants to share something with me. Now, that should make you excited if I say, God wants to share something with you. See, some folk want to share something with you, but they ain't got much to share. But if God want to share something with you, how I many you know everything God got is good? Peep Romans 8, 17, and if we are his children, man, I love this verse right here, then we are his, see, I just want to run around the church again. I wish y'all could get excited where I get excited in the world. But I know some of y'all ain't never, n never received nothing as an heir. Because when your kinfolk die, they leave bills. Amen, somebody? So I feel you, I feel you, I feel you. When you see the word heir, there is no excitement. But, but for those that have received an inheritance, there's some folks' whole life changed when somebody died because somebody left. Come on, somebody. Somebody left. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Am I lying? No. Why? Because we recognize 
that even in death, even in death, there are blessings. Somebody missed it. In other words, somebody can die and leave somebody something that changes their entire life and they couldn't get it until somebody died. Major key alert, some of your blessings are not going to come to you until that part of you dies that's blocking your blessings, until that part of you dies that will not obey God, until that part of you dies. Come on, part of you gotta die so you can be the benefactor of God's promises. We are his heirs. Heirs of who? Heirs of God, wow. And fellow heirs, two insurance policies, sharing his spiritual blessings and his inheritance. Peep this, if indeed, uh-oh, this is where we stop shouting. We share in his, again, everybody wanna shine, but don't nobody wanna buff. If you really gonna be blessed on a biblical level, I got good news and bad news for you. You're gonna have to suffer. You don't have to clap. Quit asking God, why me? Quit asking God, why am I still at this job? Why am I still sick? Why am I still married? Oh, well, no, don't, don't worry about that. That's a whole nother sermon. Why am I in this situation? There's some stuff you gotta go through. God don't get us out of everything. You don't have to clap, you need to hear me though. See, you want God to be like the Aladdin lamp. You want a rubber lamp, say a prayer, and then poof, things change. No, some stuff you gotta go through because that's the only way you grow through. Hmm. How many of y'all been through some sufferings? Cool. How many know you a better person because of your sufferings? Believe it or not, you're better because of your sufferings. Why? Because the sufferings, peep this, cause you to be able to share in his. Okay, see, that's where you should have shouted. That's why you should have adjusted your wig three degrees to the left. Why? Because God is willing. See, I never heard this growing up in church. God is willing to share his glory with us. Nobody ever told me that. They told me God's glory belongs to God. God says, no, you know what glory is? Shine. Come on, somebody. You know what glory is? It's brilliance. God says, I want to look good. I want you to look good. I want to shine. I want you to shine. It's time for you to recognize that you are only days away from being the brightest you've ever been. You're only days away of shining like you never shined before. Everybody got to understand, a pearl that comes out of an oyster ain't nothing till somebody polishes it. When they pull a pearl out of an oyster, it's a nasty, gross thing because it's covered in mucus, covered in dirt. But when you get to pop. Okay, come on, some, I, I'm gonna help you. Some of you don't recognize that the sandpaper in your life has a purpose. Uh. Somebody don't realize that them difficult folks on your job that keep getting up under your nerves, keep trying to get you rolled up. Uh-huh. They got a purpose, baby. What's the purpose? To get you to a place where you ain't bothered by what's happening in the next cubicle. To get you to a place where you don't care if they talk to you or not. To get you to a place where you cool with them, you cool without them, you there to get a check, not to make a friend. They there to get you to that place. And here's what I've discovered. When you get to that place, God says, your time is up here. Now I can move you to another. I'm gonna clap for myself, I'm good. How many of y'all got some sandpaper in your life right now? Quit trying to destroy the sandpaper. Somebody got it. Your every waking day is you trying to destroy the sand. Quit being mad with the sandpaper. Don't you know that the devil has a purpose? Don't you know that the devil has a purpose? I'm just gonna talk about me. If Satan had, a, had not done what he'd done and, and buffeted me and roughed me through my life and caused me the heartache and the pain, I would not be here today. I, I don't know about you, I'm just gonna be honest. I would not even be in church if it were not for the devil. Come on. Oh, you ain't here just because of God, stop playing. Some of y'all didn't come to God till you thought about commit, committing suicide, until you couldn't take the pressure no more, till you had tried everything, and it was a devil. Somebody say, the devil brought me to a place 
of realization that if I can hook up with God, the devil can't. I thank God. Y'all ain't going to like this right here, but I thank God for the devil. Wait a minute, Pastor. You done lost me now, bro. How you going to thank God for the devil? Well, the Bible says he'll make our enemies our footstools. The devil is our enemy. What is a footstool? A footstool is a device that gives you the ability to reach levels that you cannot reach on your <laughs> on your own. So if God makes our enemies and the devil is our enemy, he makes the devil our footstool, then I need more devils in my life to reach a higher. Yeah, come on, come on, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm taking applications for devils today. Amen, somebody? See, while you're trying to get rid of your devils, you, you can't go to another level without another devil. Every devil gets you to another level. When the last time you thank God for your devils? I know you, you can't, that's, that's above your head. Without the enemy, you wouldn't even be saved today. Without the enemy, some of us would not pray as often as we do. Come on, somebody. Y'all, help them, God. Somebody, if you got it, just clap a little bit. Just clap a little bit. Somebody say pure imagination. It's the golden ticket. I'm going to close because some of you are looking very interesting. I love you, though. I started this message by having you watch a video from the movie Willy Wonka, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. One of my favorite all-time movies, and I wish I could watch it with you. Because I could teach you as the movie progresses, there's a gentleman who is unique in his own right. He talks different, he walks different, he dresses different. Watch your mouth. You don't have the imagination to wear these pants, that's your problem. <laughs> Love you, man. He's unique. He's different. And he owns a candy factory called the Willy Wonka Chocolate Factory. He makes all kind of candies. And if you follow the story, he's getting ready to die. And the problem is he doesn't have anybody to leave an inheritance. <laughs> He doesn't have any sons, doesn't have any daughters, doesn't have any children. So he has to find someone who is worthy. I got y'all. Y'all got me today. Y'all got me. He has to find somebody who's worthy. And the only really prerequisite he's looking for, he's looking for somebody that has a pure. Because without a pure imagination, that person cannot continue to create awesome different types of candies in the candy business. You got to be able to think outside the box to do what Willie does. And he's looking for somebody with a pure imagination. So what he does, he comes up with something that he knows will attract people. He comes up with a way to put out a golden ticket, and he uses his Wonka bars. Put the Wonka bars on the screen. What these are are chocolate candy bars straight from the factory. Nothing new because the Wonka bars have been in circulation for many years, but now something special has been inserted. Help them, Holy Ghost. Something special has been inserted into something that is sweet to the taste. But every bar does not have the golden ticket. <laughs> so if you want to be a part of this inheritance, you've got to find the candy bar with the golden ticket. And those kids were running through candy bars. They got so bad they wouldn't even eat the candy. They was just ripping the paper off looking for the ticket. But there's a young brother that finds a ticket that comes from a poor, impoverished family. He and a couple of other kids win, and they get a tour of the chocolate factory. He takes them on a tour, and what he's really doing is testing their imagination. I wish we could watch this movie together. And each test is a test to see, can you follow instructions? Can you do what you're supposed to do? And can you think outside the box? And one by one by one, they fail the test. I stop to tell you that when you lack pure imagination, you lose out on God's blessings. Moses had to have an imagination to lead the children of Israel 
out of slavery across the Red Sea into a promised land. You gotta have an imagination to trust God in the lion's den. You gotta have an imagination to believe God can multiply two fish, five loaves of bread. This just in from God. You can't get a miracle without a pure imagination. When you think of miracles, you think of why you can't do it. You think of why you can't be healed. I talk about being millionaires, and many of you will talk yourself out of it before I even get it out of my mouth. I can't be no millionaire. I live in the projects. I can't be no millionaire. I've been poor. Your imagination won't even allow you to see yourself being something amazing. And when you do that, you lose. But if you can believe, you can receive. Somebody say, well, I'll believe it when I see it. I tell people all the time, no, when you see it, then you'll be able to believe it. Amen, somebody? See it where? See it on the inside. See it in your mind. When you close your eyes, what do you see yourself doing? When you close your eyes, where do you see yourself going? Because when you open your eyes, that's what's going to manifest. Everything starts on the inside and then begins on the outside. Somebody say, I got to get a pure imagination. The thing that blessed me the most about this movie was Willy Wonka didn't do this by himself. Life is meant to be done with others. But I stopped by to tell you, you'll never see your greatness until you find somebody that's got an imagination just like you. You gotta find somebody that believes in impossible things. Matter of fact, you gotta find somebody that has seen you at your worst and still believe you can be your best. That's the person. Those are the kind of people. You gotta find somebody that know all your bad issues and still tell you in your ear, you still gonna make it. You still gonna be somebody. They know all your mistakes and they still build you up. That person has an imagination and can see what nobody else can see. It's the same thing we do with our children. Your children mess up over and over and over again. Joker can't you spell cat. But what you tell him? If you're a smart parent, what you tell him? You're smart. You is kind. <laughs> you is smart. It can be dumb as a bag of nails. But as a parent, it's your job to see beyond his ability, and to ignite his imagination. Come on, somebody. It's the same thing God does with us. We fall over and over and over again. Come on, we sin over and over and over again. And God say, my gifts are without repentance. If I called you to do something, I ain't going to never change my mind. God don't care what you do. He still got a blessing for you. He still got a call for you. He still got a beautiful life for you. Why? Because God got a pure imagination. I'm preaching to myself now. Somebody said, I need some help in this world. Put my boy up there. Willy Wonka had some help. I wish I could watch movies with y'all. In the Willy Wonka movie, he's got these assistants. Small in stature. See, I, I just preached. Some of y'all make the same mistake David's daddy made. When it came time for them to find the next king, David's father didn't have a pure imagination. He thought about David who was ruddy, who was stinking, who was out there with the sheep, and he could not imagine that his baby boy could be a king one day. Didn't even call him to the selection. He called all of his big sons, all of his tall sons. I stopped by to tell you, sister, you may not look as good as everybody else, but if God got a husband for you, you ain't got to worry about nothing. You ain't got to worry about nothing. That man going to walk right past Cinderella, and he going to hook up with Cinderella. Well, I don't know about Cinderella, but whatever your name is, he going to hook up with you. Hey, man, somebody, I don't know where that came from. That was crazy. <laughs> that was crazy even for me. I'm talking to those of you that have been overlooked by your own people. It's quiet in here now. I stop by to tell you what God has for you is for you. That's the only thing I'm telling you. Pastor, how do I survive that? Keep a pure imagination. 
I don't care how many folk get married or who marry who, you keep your imagination in check. Tell folk you already married. Change your Facebook status today to married. When they ask you where your husband is, tell them you don't know, he ain't found you yet. Amen, somebody? But go ahead and change it. Go ahead and change it. Tell them I'm already married. I'm reserved. He looking for me. Here I go. Come on, somebody. See, your imagination won't let you do that. David was not called to the initial procession. But they couldn't make king out of nobody but him. Because the kingdom belonged to him. And they had to call him. Y'all gonna like this. They had to call him even though they didn't like him. They had to call him even though they didn't want to. They had to call him because the man say, ain't nobody gonna sit out till David get here. See, a lot of you gotta recognize you intimidate people without even trying. Where are you? Who am I talking to? You don't even try to intimidate people. It's not even my, it's not my agenda. I'm not trying to, I intimidated a man yesterday. Wouldn't even try. I just wanted my ice cream right. And I said something to that brother and that brother could not even function. I wasn't loud, I wasn't mean, I just was clear about what I was going to accept and what I wasn't going to accept because I was paying my money for that expensive ice cream. You gonna get it right? That brother, how you were doing? I say, why are you so nervous? People recognize greatness long before you do. It's time for you to hold your head up it's time for you to stick your chest out. I don't care if you ain't got no money. I don't care if you wore the same shirt last night you wore at the church today. You in that stinking shirt, hold your chest up, hold your head up. God gonna give you some Febreze, but I need you to have an imagination because things are about to get better. Who am I preaching to? Somebody say, I better get me some Oompa Loompas. What's an Oompa Loompa? Somebody that's in your life <laughs> to help you reach your destiny. Somebody needs some Oompa Loompas. Somebody who don't get mad when God bless you. Somebody who praises God when you get a promotion. And all you need to do is just look at people's faces and look at people's reaction. Y'all are tethered to people who act like they play like they want you to make it. But they don't want you to make it because if they wanted you to make it, they would not get a vexed spirit every time you take two steps forward and they still in the same place. You better recognize fake people in your life who want to see you fail, but they don't want you to, wanna, they don't want you to know that they want you to fail. Or they're in your life because of the benefits. Somebody say, I gotta get a pure imagination. Failed relationships, broken promises, public disappointments, private setbacks. Here's the power of a pure imagination. I still believe my best is before me and my worst is behind me. I still believe. I see you might have just filed bankruptcy, but you still believe God's gonna bless you to be healthy, wealthy, and wise. You still believe it. That's what a pure imagination does. Every relationship you've been in has failed and faltered. But if you got a pure imagination, you still see yourself walking down the aisle in a white dress and just white by faith, amen. Just white dress, amen. Coming down the aisle with your husband in spite of all the disappointments. I will tell you this, the minute you stop imagining, that's the minute you die. I'm preaching to somebody right now that's got to start back imagining better days, brighter days, because I believe the best is always yet to come. Give God praise if you got it. I'm gone. If you got it, if you got it, if you got it, if you really got it, it's not for me. It's not for me. It's to let God know that you got it, that you, that you heard it, that you got it in your spirit, that you hear God telling you to purify your imagination, to stop doubting, to stop, to stop disqualifying yourself. Continue to believe beyond your experience. Somebody say, I still believe. 